Ching! The buck stops here. Time for the quiz thing. Gold hard cash. I mean, when you think about it, it's really just paper, but it's a good thing we have it. Before money, people had to barter like this. Hey, can I give you a full wrap bag for that full bag of beans? A full wrap bag? That's a barter bargain. Here you go. Hey, this is only a half full wrap bag. This was not a fair exchange of rats and beans. The problem was determining a fair value. We needed something that we could all agree could be exchanged for goods and services. So the solution was money. And I mean actual paper money. I'm not just saying like the solution was money. That was so money. I'm saying like we, we needed money. I'm saying like that solution was paper dollar bills. Which one of these historical mega all-stars was instrumental in designing the first colonial money? Was it A, Benjamin Franklin, B, George Washington, C, Thomas Jefferson, or D, Aaron Burr? It wasn't Mr. Aaron Burr, sir. You guys only know these names because of Hamilton. I'm just pointing that out. If you said A, you get an A plus. Mr. Penny saved as a penny earned. Benjamin Franklin was the first person to print colonial money. And he put all kinds of phrases and pictures on the money so that you might actually learn something when you're inspecting those dollar bills to make sure that they're actually real. He wanted money to quote, make an impression on the mind. And those colonial dollar bills, the denominations were all over the place. There was like an $80 bill and a $6 bill with a picture of a beaver on it. I know this one's not fake because it's got the picture of a beaver on it. Speaking of forgotten denominations, which of these coins never existed in American currency? Was it A, the half penny, B, the half dime, C, the trime, or D, the 30 cent piece? If you said C, the trime actually existed. Look it up, it's a three cent dime. It's a real thing. I wish we still had the trime. That sounds pretty cool. Hey man. You got any trimes? I'm trying to get a soda. No, actually it's D, it's the 30 cent piece. I made that one up. Back in the day, colonial money was weird and wonderful. Back then you could get a full wrap bag for only five trimes. You know, today we're so used to the way our money works, we rarely stop to think about what's actually on it or how much it's actually worth. Jesus knew that money was gonna make an impression on our minds. So he determined where you could add the most value with your giving. Let's say you get some money. You're probably gonna spend some of it, that's cool. And I know you're gonna save some of it because that's really smart. But the first thing you're gonna do because you live a life of generosity is you're gonna look for an opportunity to give some of it away. That's where Jesus said we should start with our tithes and our offerings. Oh man, we've all heard this before. What does tithe mean? Come on, shout it out. 10%. We already know this, right? We hear this all the time. It's 10%. A tithe is t giving back to God 10% of what he gave to us. And then an offering is anything above and beyond that. As you plan to be generous, Jesus told us who we should give our money to. He said we should focus our giving on people with needs and people sowing seeds. People with needs are orphans, widows, uh, people dealing with poverty or food scarcity. And then people sowing seeds are um, people in the local church and missionaries. Do you have any idea how much the world can change when you give to people with needs and people sowing seeds? You're participating in the restoration of the world. Your giving is a chance to put the world back to the way that God intended it. You're adding value. So look for ways to be generous. Start with 10%, but don't stop there. Make an impression on some minds by living a generous, generous life. I'm the quiz man, goodbye.